So in figure 9.17, uh, what we're looking at is, uh, uh, is our, our five different soil textures. You can see we go from clay loam silt, to silt loam to loam, sandy loam, and then sands. Obviously, we're, 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 we're going from high clay content to low clay content. You can see that by the CEC numbers, starting out at a very high CEC of 25, or relatively high at 25. Uh, and moving down to a CEC of five for the sands, not a lot of um, not a lot of cation exchange capacity in sand. Although interestingly enough, there's some. And uh, what we're doing here is we're uh, we're looking at how much uh, lime we have to add. Okay, so here's our ground limestone to raise the pH to six point five. Okay, so if we start out, for instance, at uh, something like, let's say, 4.5. They don't actually give us the exact place where we're starting out, um, but we can assume it. We can assume it's a, an acidic pH. How much limestone do we have to add to that soil in terms of uh, amount per surface area, so megagrams per hectare, if we have a uh, a sand, for instance? So if we look at uh, a sand, we'll be on this line right here. We have to add about four. 0.3 or four, maybe four and a half, we can say, uh, uh, megagrams of, of limestone, ground limestone, per hectare to get that pH up to 6.5. In this case, uh, likely a, a, um, uh, a good place to have pH so that, that crops will grow. Uh, as we move up this uh, up this chain here, we go we go to loams, this solid blue line, and we see that for a loam we're going to need almost 10 megagrams per hectare of ground limestone to get it to a higher pH. Now the reason it's taking more, okay, the reason we have more is because we're increasing the CEC, which means we probably have to get to some of that exchange and reserve acidity that's on the soil, uh, get those hydrogens off, tie them up with uh, uh, with lime uh, and and um, reduce the level of acidity and it takes a lot more because we have a, we have several more uh, uh, exchange sites several more centimoles of, of charge uh, on the exchange sites that we have to take care of that we have to um, get the hydrogens off um, and so so again liming is a is a way that we uh, remove hydrogens from the uh, soil CEC site and uh, we tie them up uh, in in some way. We reduce their availability. Uh, we turn it into uh, into water, for instance, through the equations that we've, that we've uh, you've talked you've seen before uh, in this section. So when we get to something like a clay loam with a CEC of 25, it turns out that we need 20 megagrams per hectare of uh, of lime material. It's a lot of lime uh, material to need. To apply, and we can't do that actually in a single year. Uh, that's a lot of lime to uh, to apply. You can see over here uh, on this description. In any case, it is unwise to apply more than seven to nine megagrams per hectare, or three to four tons per acre of liming material, uh, in a single application. It needs time to be able to work, to be able to remove the acidity uh, from the soil. And this is a lot. This is a multi-year project to get a clay loam with a higher CEC from a low pH to pH 6.5, we have to continually apply high amounts, three to four tons per year, and, and have that um, uh, be tilled into the soil so they can react with all of the soil. So you can see, with the higher the higher the CEC, the more long-term we have to think about um, the, the, uh, uh, fixing the pH problem there. And so this goes back to the idea that we discussed before, that the higher, uh, here we go, the higher the CEC equals a higher buffering capacity, okay, equals higher amounts of, uh, of lime, okay, in that situation. Um, so, there we go.